Recoil management is something that is often taken for granted by a lot of people. And they may understand, oh, I need to be able to control recoil really well, uh, but I don't necessarily know how to. So what I wanna do in the video today is I wanna talk about some of the techniques that I use for controlling recoil that allow me to shoot fast. Because ultimately, if you wanna shoot fast, you need to be able to control recoil because you can only shoot as fast as you can see your sights. So the faster your sights can come back down on target, the faster you can accurately shoot. And that requires good recoil management. So what does that look like? Well, let's go check it out. So the first thing I wanna talk about is stock placement. This is one that I see a lot of people mess up or not think about, or maybe they just don't understand. But basically what we wanna do is we have the bore of the rifle right here, and we wanna to try to keep the entire bore, this entire line right here in our body, somehow, in our shoulder pocket, below our shoulder, uh, here with some meat behind it. And I see a lot of people, they go to index their carbine and they're like this. And sometimes if you have a plate carrier, body armor, whatever, yeah, it might force you to do that. There's a few other things you can do to help with the recoil. But if you can, you really should try to get this down into your shoulder. It makes a huge difference. Yes, it forces you to have to drive your head down a little bit more on the gun, and that's why taller optics exist, uh, but it's not a real big problem. So what I'm using right now is I have a basic gun that I'm gonna be demonstrating with. This is a Colt 6940. I have a Surefire three-prong flash hider. This is not a super special recoil awesome gun. Uh, this does not have a muzzle brake, it doesn't have a tuned uh, buffer tube, buffer spring, special bolt, whatever. This is a basic M4 carbine and then I have hot ammo. I'm not using anything weird or crazy uh, to shoot this video, so you're seeing just some basic stuff. And I have a aim point, a comp M4 that is lower third on this gun. So stock placement's really big. We wanna keep our stock nice and low in our body and I wanna kinda demonstrate what that looks like. So we got an empty gun, load. And what I like to do when I'm working on recoil management is I like to shoot five or six round groups because those are those, that's a good amount of rounds to actually see what your optic's doing and recover, uh, get your sight recovering on each shot. I'm gonna be shooting into this black circle and I'm gonna show you what bad stock placement looks like uh, with, when you're having bad uh, recoil and what's, what that looks like. So I have just a little bit of my stock touching my shoulder. I go to fire. All right, so can I shoot accurately and shoot slow doing that? Yes, I can. But if I wanna start shooting fast, can I get away with having a stock in a less than ideal place? And the answer is no, I shouldn't want that. So now I'll try to shoot fast doing that. All right, the group was uh, very ugly and there were rounds that went up because the stock is not firmly placed in my body. So now I'm simply going to drop the stock down in my body and we'll see, uh, what, we'll see what I get. Much better having it down. And I'm not even applying any other stuff going on uh, quite yet. Now to keep your stock from jumping all around, the next big point is having positive pressure pulling the gun into your body. And this is something they also see a lot of people forgetting. So they're literally just taking their support hand, grabbing the rail, they have their stock somewhere. Maybe the stock placement's good, it's low, but they're not pulling the gun into their body. So they have all this slop going on and it looks like that. So I have good stock placement now, but I have a lot of slop. I'm not pulling this gun into my body to minimize all that inconsistent jumping around that happens, which ends up pushing my optic off to the left, right, going down, just all over the place and it's inconsistent. And obviously we want to avoid that. So now I'm going to just go, all right, sock is uh, placed well into my body. And now I'm just going to take my support hand, actually pull the gun into my body. <laughs> Works a lot better, right? Really simple, just fixing that stock, what's going on there, and then simply pulling the gun into your body. <laughs> the next one is stance, and stance, is important, although what I would say is don't rely on a perfectly good stance to control recoil because in some situations, you may not be able to have the perfect fighting stance or the perfect recoil management stance. But I am gonna explain the perfect stance or some of the principles behind it because these principles can still be applied in other areas. So the big thing here is I don't like squaring up on the target like so because I have nothing to keep my body from preventing myself from falling backwards as you can see like this is a big problem and I know a lot of people used to teach this but as soon as you start shooting you know 10 rounds six rounds really fast 
you start to go back like this. And as soon as your shoulders pass behind your feet, the gun really starts to exaggerate going upwards. People then drive the gun down as much as they can, and that usually results in shots going high and shots going really low. So what we do to combat that is literally just push one leg behind our shoulders. It could be my right leg, could be my left leg. I also have my base wider than my shoulders. So my feet are just wider than my shoulders, and then I have one foot behind my shoulders. And kind of my rule of thumb is, as long as my shoulders are in front of my back foot, whichever one it is, my gun isn't going to dramatically start running up and I'm not going to lose balance going backwards. So it's pretty simple. It's just my shoulders are in front of my back foot, my feet are wider than my shoulders, and I'm fine. My body isn't gonna get chucked around, I'm not gonna fall backwards, even if I'm shooting something like a 308 or a shotgun. Now, this, this is kind of the perfect stance, and can you rely on being in that perfect stance? The answer is no. But the principles here still apply, and you can still apply these principles in a confined space, in a vehicle, up against the barricade, leaning forward, leaning forward with your body, and trying to keep your shoulders from going back from your center of gravity. So, in the next one, this is the really big one. Let me grab another magazine, because I'm gonna need it. The big one is what's this doing? Your support arm. So obviously your firing hand is working the trigger and holding onto the gun, but it's, it's not doing much more than that. This arm is doing all the work for control and recoil on a carbine. And so what's going on, what I like to do, is I actually like to pull the gun back on target after the shot is fired. So I'm not just letting the gun run its course and go up and then come down. I'm actually going bang and pulling down, bang and pulling down. And a good analogy for this that some of you guys will understand is, in modern video games, you have guns that have a lot of recoil. And you can either just hold down the trigger on the mouse, your left, uh, left mouse click or on your controller, and just let the recoil pattern kind of ride through and then reset when you're done shooting. Or you can pull your mouse back, or you can pull back on your, on your analog stick and actually kind of fight that recoil. This is the exact same thing. While I'm shooting this carbine, I'm not just letting it go up, 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 up. I'm going, nope, I'm gonna pull it back down on target. I'm gonna keep that dot flying in the same spot, seeing that flash of red, and I'm not gonna let it go up. I'm actually gonna pull it down. It's the exact same thing. So now when I combine good stock placement, positive pressure into my shoulder, I am also I have a decent stance, and now I'm using my support arm to actually pull the gun back on target and actually control it, and I put all that together, it's pretty awesome. I want to show you guys a few drills that I do to work recoil management. And the first one is, it's really simple, and you can potentially do this in an indoor range provided they allow rapid fire. Then again, if they don't allow rapid fire, you can still shoot a very small dot and just try to get your optic back on it so you can fire again uh, with each shot that you're taking. So I take our cadence circles off of our website. So I have six circles that are like eh, three and a half inches, I don't know, whatever. And I go to about five yards and I'm going to shoot this with my carbine. Taking height over bore into account, I'm gonna to have to just aim at the top of the circle, and then I fire five or six rounds into it, and I just track my pattern, see what's happening, and I try to pay attention to where my dot is going, because what I want is I want my dot to consistently go in, in the same uh, direction every time I fire, because it's following the path of least resistance. So I want my dot to look like it's going up and left every time. I never want my dot to disappear and go low, or go off to the right, because that means I'm not doing the job correctly with my support arm and I'm letting it get away from me. I want that dot to be predictable. I want my recoil uh, pattern, or whatever you want to call it, to be predictable. And every gun's a little bit different, but you'll learn your different guns and how they recoil and how much you need to pull down with your left hand and the weight and adding a peck or a suppressor, like whatever. But you start to learn that. So this gun is just gonna go up and left and I'm gonna be tracking that and I want it to be the same every time as I'm rattling off those six rounds. So let's do it. Five yards, about right here-ish. And uh, I will, I'll go off a timer, because hey, why not? 
So, six rounds. All right, so a little low. I need to aim a little taller than that. So, not bad. My dot, sure enough, kind of going off to the, the, the right side, high and right. That's what I want, and then I'm just pulling it back down. So we'll do six again. And that was some trigger freeze. But not bad, not bad. I was uh, pulled uh, the groups a little more off to the right, but that's okay. Good, good. I like that. So consistent. It wasn't just all pulled off to one side. It wasn't pulled off to the other. I like that. So this is a drill right here you could do to work on your recoil management. It's great. You're getting some good uh, speed, speed and accuracy in there as well, but you're also getting good recoil management. You want your dot to just land in the same spot every time as you're pulling it back down. You can also use smaller dots, or you can move over and use a bigger circle, uh, get a little further back. So now, let's just burn it down. Let's just shoot into one of these bigger circles, and let's just see what happens. As fast as I can, here at five yards, I can aim center. I don't need to worry about height over bore. I can just aim right for the number, and I will shoot for the number two. All right, good recoil management means a good group, good accuracy, and good speed. And that was six rounds in one, two, nine, first shot in five, one. So one, six split is with a mil spec trigger, nice heavy mil spec trigger, one, five, a one, five, a one, six, and a one, six. And I'm good to go. And if I had bad stock placement, I'm not pulling the gun into my body, I'm not using my support arm like I should, I would not have a group like this shooting that fast, even though I'm up close. Yeah, sure, I'm up close. Some people say it's easy to shoot up close. It's not if you go fast. So that's what you want to look for. But probably the best test of how good your recoil management is, is shooting a smaller target very quickly. So obviously shooting like that number two, like I just did, uh, that's, that's a good test, uh, but it's, it's pretty easy to do that. So now we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to be shooting into one of these little circles. So I still have height over bore I have to take into account, but I'm also going to try to shoot it, I'm going to try to shoot it pretty fast. And it's a good test of seeing what my recoil management's doing, because if my recoil management's good, I'm basically just going off of my first sight picture. I see where my first sight picture is, and I literally just am shooting back into that first sight picture just fine. So we'll see how fast I can do this. I'm gonna shoot into the number 10 off the timer, six rounds. All right, I dropped one. Not too bad, it was a two, two, one. And that was a two, 10. So two consistent times, nice group. And this requires shooting a small target like this, that speed, this distance, the higher overboard, all that good stuff, requires good recoil management. You're not going to do this with bad fundamentals and bad technique, and you're definitely not going to do this if you're holding the magwell like this. It's just not going to happen. That's why we hold the, the bore and the rail out here so we can control the muzzle so we can push it back on target. So when you're testing your recoil management, shoot bigger circles up close, try to go fast, see what's going on, but then also shoot smaller circles because this is where it really begins to be evident whether you are having good recoil management or bad recoil management. Where you have that first sight picture and you start firing and everything just lines up, good to go. So that's what I do. So in closing, a big thing to remember and understand is there are lots of upgrades and different things you can put on your rifles to help with recoil management. You can get big muscle breaks, you can get tuned bolt carrier groups. Definitely tuning your gun with the right buffer and spring uh, can help out a lot. And there's a lot of, you know, obviously you can also add suppressors, which suppressors can help add weight, which helps keep the gun flat. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter how much of these different things you do to your gun what matters is your technique. What matters is training. That's ultimately what's going to allow you to perform well. I mean, I was doing all those demos with a super basic Colt M4 with a flash hider, a mil spec trigger, a short rail. I don't have a competition gun. I don't have a muzzle brake. I don't have light ammo. I'm just shooting normal stuff and I can still shoot fast. I can still shoot accurate. Why? Technique. The other thing to remember is it's not all about mass. Some people think that. They think, oh, well, if you're a big dude, you can control recoil. 
It definitely helps, but look at me, I'm a scrawny shrimp, but I can still shoot these guns just fine. Why? Technique, that's it. Just applying these few things that I went over. And if you can do that, you can take any gun. It could be an MP5, it could be a printer blackout, it could be a 308 gun, it could be something bigger. Applying all these fundamentals, all these different principles, and you can run that gun like a boss. Recoil management goes hand in hand with accuracy. Yes, you can shoot accurately with poor fundamentals, putting the stock up over your shoulder, collapsing in like this and shoot 200 meters. Absolutely, you can do that. You can shoot accurately with a magwell grip. Yes, you can. But as soon as you have to start shooting fast or on the move, is that actually going to work out when you start adding conditions to your shooting? That's why we have high standards of recoil management so we can keep that gun in control, we can dominate it, and then we can do what we need to do. Thanks so much for watching.